This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock. Hello, and welcome back to a very quiet day in the arena. As it's late in the evening, I have to fly at about 5 o'clock in the morning uh, out to the West Coast. So, uh, I am recording content all night long so that I don't have to think about it very much on my trip. And I'm trying to find some cool decks to play. I'm trying to show you more of the new cards. And I'm going to play a little Velimachus Lorehold uh, Boros transmogrify luca i don't know i don't know exactly what you want to call it it's an interesting deck so first of all uh, we'll go over the new cards the old cards you've probably seen but they're mostly here to either get hit off of lore hold or keep the the battlefield in check so this deck is designed so that you can take luca and you can target a three casting cost creature like a bone crusher giant skyclave apparition or a mila crafty companion and because you don't have any fours any fives any sixes you only have two sevens the velimachus lorehold elder dragon you will get to put this card directly into play with luca for five mana instead of seven which makes a big difference this is the 5 5 flying vigilance haste whenever it attacks look at the top seven of your library you may cast an instant or sorcery with mana value less than or equal to the power without paying its mana cost put the rest on the bottom in any order so we get free spells so we make sure we have some huge hits for the free spells you can hit lore hold command you can hit mythos of vadrock which is a pretty underplayed five damage divided among any number of creature or planeswalkers card you can also hit fire prophecy but there's also some hidden stuff uh, rip apart is another new card that you can hit that's a good removal spell Flame Scroll Celebrant. You can hit this and cast Revel in Silence, the backside, although I don't know if that's really going to help you very much since making the opponent unable to cast spells doesn't matter because uh, they're instants and they would just do it in response anyway. You can also stomp face with Bone Crusher Giant. So there's actually a lot of hits for the lore hold here. And then um, let's talk about Flame Scroll Celebrant. Why is this card in the deck? On the one in a red for a 2 1, whenever an opponent activates an ability that isn't a mana ability, one damage to that player. One in a red, Fire Breathing, plus 2 plus 0. Eh. Revel in Silence, white, white, the backside, instant. Your opponents can't cast spells or activate Planeswalker's loyalty abilities this turn. Why is this in the deck? Oh, it also exiles itself. It's in the deck because it's actually a white answer to the to emergent ultimatum i can't possibly make this deck fast enough to beat a deck that ramps into emergent ultimatum it's just impossible and since it's still such a huge part of the meta we simply can't play this deck unless we have a way to compete with that or we're going to auto scoop it which i'm not willing to do but here's what happens if they cast emergent ultimatum and you respond by casting revel in silence yes the ultimatum will still resolve they'll still get to pick the cards that they want to play with the ultimatum but they won't be allowed to cast them so whatever spells they pick just end up getting exiled so it's a pretty cool backdoor way to be emergent ultimatum and if they're not the ultimatum deck you still get a two mana two one with an interesting ability that people underestimate how much damage it really causes it can cause a lot of damage uh, mila crafty companion a four of here excited to play with this card more this card whenever it gets targeted lets you draw a card actually any permanent you control whenever it gets targeted you get to draw a card and it protects your luca so uh mila protecting the copper coat outcast or the backside luca wayward bonderer is very flavorful because whenever they attack the lucas they get a loyalty counter also the plus one the plus one uh of the luca wayward bonder is okay but really it's the minus two returning a creature card to the battlefield sometimes they kill our velamachus lorehold I know. Tragic. Heartless Act will do that, but we can bring it back and try again with the minus two ability. So it's a fun deck. I don't expect tremendous results for it, but we're going to go play with it. And I love a good cycle of cards. Like I love the Elder Dragon cycle. We'll probably try to build some deck around all the different Elder Dragons and play them for you because that's the kind of videos I like to make. Today's video is dedicated to the latest member of the Cool Kids Club at the time I hit record, Andrew Shearer. Thank you very much for hitting the join button. $4.99 a month gets you early access to my deck lists and the chance 
to get a cosmetic purchased in your honor. We're going through the store and buying up the new card bundles because that's usually a very mana or money effective way to get it if we're going to buy these bundles anyway. So uh, in your honor, Andrew, we're going to get the white Mystical Archive Styles bundle. I love the Japanese art card styles. They're really cool arts. They stand out a lot and I'm going to enjoy playing with these. So in your honor and thank you. Let's dive in. Let the nonsense begin. It's gonna be a long night, so I'm not gonna spend much of it worried about battling rogues over and over or my rank. We're gonna play some casual magic and I'll try to keep games that were interesting, competitive, some different kinds of decks and at least some good decks. All right, play Q. We've got Mila and Skyclave rip apart and Mythos. Looks like we're in a good position to try to control at least the first part of the game. We get to go straight for the Triumph into the Snarl, so our mana is going to be very good. Our opponent has two snow-covered forests to start the day. Stone Coil. I plan to rip that apart, except for one problem. Protection from multicolor. Dun dun. Well, they got me already. We're gonna have to leave it to Skyclave Apparition, and I'm really going to regret that this is not an instant. Because there might be something that I can target here. Our opponent goes straight to gem raiser status. That escalated quickly. Ow. Well, our Skyclave gives our opponent a 6-6 six, six token. That's going to be really hard to remove. No, actually, it's just a 4-4. Four, four. This is a 0. So it does give them a 4-4 four, four token if they kill this. Mythos can deal with it. Garuk. Garuk is on fire. Hmm. Well, this lines up pretty well. We could rip it apart and attack the Garuk. We can also just do this. Like, kind of amazing how well this uh, this lines up. Just completely clear them off the board. We even had the Jeskai mana, thanks to the Triome. So, the way that Mythos works, 5 damage divided among creatures and planeswalkers. If you spend the Jeskai mana until your next turn, those permits can't attack or block, and their abilities can't be activated. Well, there's no creatures, and there's no creatures. Maybe we get to rip apart this Scavenging Ooze. Swarm Shambler. Hmm. Hmm. Annoying little card. So we could play the Mythos, but it would make a 1-1 one -one that we can't quite target. I also like saving the Mythos in case they get a 4-4. Four -four. We could play a Mila, since there's nothing in the graveyard. And then if the opponent targets something of ours, we draw a card. I like that. Pretty good card to have on the battlefield. I'm a little worried about Primal Might. I'm worried about the Ooze eating it. But I think Mythos can save us from most things. And that we're in a great spot as long as we draw lands, because we can Luka into the other lore hold in the deck. You need a little foxy. This is a pretty girl. This is a pretty girl. Luca, not so much pretty. Although maybe some ladies would find him hunky. I don't know. Couldn't speak to that. Hmm. Whenever permanent you control becomes the target of a spell or ability opponent controls. I do want to kill this questing beast. I could exile it. With the Skyclave. But I think this is the play. Alright. Cleaned that up. Opponent, please stop playing things I can't handle. Okay. 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 Ooze can also eat. Whoa. So aggressive. 
Uh, no blocks. I guess you can get that up to a six, but you don't. Why hold up mana here? You're gonna Blizzard Brawl? Yep, so I draw a card at least. Yes, please. I'm uh, struggling to hit my fifth land. It's starting to make me angry. Thank you. All right. Well, we didn't come here to not do this. So this might not be the best play because we could definitely screw this up, but we're going for it. We need to hit a good spell here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Let's do the three and then what? I guess we'll make a three two. Here's the three and the three life. And Garrett goes down. That's that's a nice turn. That's a nice turn. Let's see what you can top deck to answer that. Dragon. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, Gem Razor's back. Why is, what's with all these 4-4s? Four My rip aparts aren't having it. Hmm. So we could turn this into probably a Bone Crusher Giant at this point is the most likely hit. I don't know if that's even worth it. But we could attack and see how the opponent blocks. I guess I like that a lot. Mythos. Seems good. Wait, I can make it... No, I can't. I was going to say I can pay Jeskai, right? But I can't. Alright, so we do like this. Because we're casting it without paying its cost, so we can't pay any bonus mana here to freeze the creatures. So we can rip apart to finish this off. We can also lore hold command. Seems good. So plus one plus oh, indestructible haste. And we can make a three two or we can helix, I'll helix. Feels good. Let's go ahead and yeah, let's just plus. Might hit some creatures. Or not. <laughs> Another Mila. Man, we uh, we stopped drawing lands. Ah, the opponent's a sweetheart. That's, so that's eight damage. We need two more. Or we need one more damage. I'm sure we could find it, though. I'm sure we could find it. All right, we're on the play. Our hand is fine. Bone Crusher Giant. Skyclave Apparition, good things. When we get to five mana, we have some people competing for our attention, but they're pretty good, so it's okay. Okay, might be up against the Aristocrats deck. Let's save the Bone Crusher Giant. Try to Skyclave app this so that if it gets exiled, they don't get the value. Try to save the Bone Crusher Giant for the Witch. Scry with the temple. Okay. Scry to the top. And a vessel. Hmm. I don't know which one of these I need to apparition more. Well, in this case... I don't have a good solution for the 5-5 five five token, so I'm going to take out the eye twitch. Let the opponent go get their pest on. Confront the past. How do you know I have planeswalkers? Sneaky. Alright. Got an app for this vessel. We're closing in on Luca. Luca ing something into a lore hold. Elder Dragon. Creature, creature. Ah, all right. Let's play that tapped. Go ahead and run out the Bone Crusher Giant. Please don't kill it. I'm trying to do cool stuff over here. Another vessel. 
What are you doing? Okay, we're sacrificing it to the Bayou Groff, which says can't sacrifice a creature or pay three. Nice. All right, Luca time. They have confront the pass to kill the Luca, but you know, it's okay. They still have to deal with the dragon. Oh, baby. So which card do we want to play? I think it's an easy mythos here. Man, that is clean. Oh. Wow. <laughs> they didn't like that. <laughs> they didn't like that. All right. Fun hand. Although, why the seven drop in the opener? Come on, guys. Probably should have just played the Triome Tapped, actually. You can tell I'm getting tired. It's getting later and later. But the content doesn't make itself, guys. That's something you'll learn if you ever decide to try it out. The content will not make itself. Let's try out a Crafty Companion. Wow, that's a vicious sound for a fox. Underworld Dreams. Ow. Good thing there's an answer for that. Although I'm sure the opponent will have Extinction Event or something of that nature. Too easy, man. Those games are just too easy. All right, Luca. I guess what we can do here is lure hold command and then Luca the token and see what we hit. Opponent's go big black deck is not the kind of thing we see too often these days. The fact that they played that early, I think means I can get away with this. But if they have a Blood Chief's Thirst, I'll regret it. So I guess we take it. Make a token. Play land. Play a Luka. See if we can hit a lore hold or something else. Mila! Nice. So if they attack Luka, Luka gets a counter. If they target Mila, we draw a card. If they target Luka, we draw a card. Good stuff. Ah, it was gonna be good stuff, but I guess not. Grim Tutor. Nice. So they probably are trying to do a combo with Underworld Dreams and Pure into the Abyss. Let's see what we hit. Nothing. Let's go ahead and steal the Solemn. We need to save this for the Underworld Dreams. And we can turn the Solemn into a Lore Hold. There's the Underworld Dreams. Ow. Well, we can just cast the lore hold here. We do not have to turn the Solomon. The problem is if they untap and pure us, we die. So we should probably rip apart instead. So, here's what we're gonna do. Let's see if they target this with a removal spell here to avoid this move. Or if they just plan to remove the lore, the Villamach, the Velomachus. Oh, they let me attack. <laughs> Feels good. All right, do we bone crush them? Yeah, there's nothing to Mythos. Stomp your face. Down to eight. All right, destroy target artifact or enchantment. That's you. Play our giant. If the opponent has another extinction event, it's probably okay. We have a lore hold to follow up with. Three. 
Three extinction events feels nice. But they didn't have Heartless Act last turn, and they probably have a Peer in their hand because they cast a Grim Tutor. I assume they fetched one part of the combo. Hold on to your butts. Well, nice draw, nice draw. Go to three. Okay, we can draw lower hold command and just win. I think we've only cast one. There's three more in the deck. Uh, also, Luca can bring back a creature from the graveyard. Rip apart can stop the underworld dreams. Bang. Nope. None of that. Let's see if we can find a creature here with Luca. They're down to three. They can't Grim Tutor again. Oh my gosh, they go to one with the castle. We draw Skyclave Apparition, okay? Plus. We hit Mila and Bone Crusher Giant. That is game. Whew. That one scared me quite a bit. That was a that was a scary ride. Like you hasn't been too bad, but I would like to face some aggro decks. A lot of mid-range. Bastard red. Okay. Well, um, if you're not playing mono red, I don't know who does. It's, it's slow, but... And we've got the 7 drop in our opener again. Okay, we should probably take one mulligan. Because this is a pretty... Pretty bad hand. It, it folds to a shock. Better. Better. What do we get rid of? Um, the Lorehold Command, I think? It's a lot of tap land going on, but at least we have plays. We'll use the Triome to get these Snarls onto the battlefield. Okay, opponent with some kind of funky Boros Sky Mall type deck. Let's hold up the Bone Crusher and see what we want to target. If they go from all the Skyclaves, that's definitely the play. Looks like some equipment warriors pile. Fireblade, okay. Three creatures already, that's a lot. Let's kill this before it can attack so that there's no boasting to be done. <clears throat> Equipped warriors have double strike and this has double strike. Okay, something to keep in mind. So there's been no stick, so they don't have a bone crusher giant, which is what I would usually worry about here. Let's get a skyclave on the field. And let's take out the Blade Master. We can also take out the Charger. This has double strike anyway. But if we block and give them a 1 1, I feel good about it. But we're probably not going to block no matter what. I'm going to go for the Charger because I don't expect this to live. And as it is right now, it can make a block and give the opponent back a 1 1, which is better than giving them back a 2 2. Of course, if they have Sky Mall, it hits hard. They have Winota. Gross. Gross. But this is their only non-human. So if we trade it here, it's pretty good for us. Okay, and they hit another Winota. That's good for us. Well, it's not great, but we'll take it. Alright, rip apart. Well, we could also just rip apart the Winota. Twice. <laughs> I think that's a little better than ripping apart the token. If they have the third Winota here... Ah, uh, man. You, you might see me cry. Alright, down to 11. Mila. 
Let's play the Bone Crusher. Mila can be played as Luca, which we still haven't gotten to do, so I'd love to have the Planeswalker version of Luca in this video. Smashing. All right. Guess we have nothing to target with the Copper Coat Outcast yet. Boom. Here we go. You may discard a card if you do draw. Um, or bounce a thing. It gains haste. Okay. I'll grab this giant. No blocks. Opponent finds that to be oops worthy. They drew Embercleave. Easy block. <laughs> Our giant's going away anyhow. Resolute strike. Good game. You coward. You coward. So there we can bring back the giant with the Luka and then use the other Luka to turn it into a lore hold. The opponent didn't even see a win con and they scoop. That's a lot of fives. I'm nervous, but I'm on the draw, so hopefully we'll hit some land drops and get there. They're good fives. You can't be too mad. Malakir Rebirth. Hmm, something that wants its creatures to die and come back, eh? Okay, what's with... Mono Black is on the rise this evening. Not sure what's up with that. Will we use the Bone Crusher? Let's see what our opponent does. I'm gonna be very reactive here. We want to see everything they have before committing our removal spell. And Skyclave Apparition exiling the Scorpion might just be better. Okay. So angry. So I think we do app this and try to bone crush this, but it might get hard. Okay, drawing another um, Skyclave Apparition. I, I was a little worried that our opponent might play more devotion and then bone crushing this won't be an option. Eidolon. Dead weight. It's ugly. I really hate this deck. The Eidolon dead weight deck. It seems like it always shows up when I'm playing creatures, and it's so obnoxious. Let's get rid of that Eidolon. Good news. We're gonna get to five mana, and we have lore hold commands. Pretty strong card. The Deadweight Army is in full effect right now. Alright, rather than use a Lore Hold command, I think we just want to Bone Crush this, um, this guy and play the other side. And then maybe we can Luka. If we Luka the Bone Crusher, stuff happens. Opponent exiles two cards for two life. P five fo fum. Here's the other side. Hmm. Man, do I hate Luris. It's okay though. All right. So they only have dead weights. There's no Myers grasp yet. So let's see what they decide to do. Dead weight the giant. Nice. Double dead weight the giant. So relentless. <clears throat> Alright, we want a lore hold command. We can kill the Luris. We should probably do it while they tapped out before they untap. And I think we also make a 3-2. Or we could sacrifice a land and draw two cards. 3-2 or draw two cards. The 3-2 is not very good against them. They just play Luris and get back dead weight or they play a Myers Grasp.
Three life. Stack this. Yay! Land. On the nightmare is big. Four or five menace. Another lower hold command. Menace is annoying. And we're actually we don't have the land to do what, what I wish we had could do, because we sacrificed it like a boss. So, we'll just try to play Ambush Viper with Lorehold Command here. We're going to have to let the Nightmare be here, but we can take out some of the tokens, or at least try to. 3-2, and 3 damage. So, here, here... See if they brought village rights to this party. They've got to run out of fun toys eventually. <laughs> okay, the murderous riders are out in force this evening. Three damage here. Re-damage Sacrifice a Permanent, because we're flooding. There's a Mythos. Just in time. Sacrificing lands has been taking a toll, and we keep drawing more. The good news is we get to play you. Which the opponent doesn't have removal at the moment. Hmm. Let's do it like this. So, we're going to kill the two creatures and freeze the Haunted Nightmare. Because... Anything damaged with this when you pay the blue mana with the Triome can't attack or block until the next turn. All right, are we flooding a little? Maybe just a little? <laughs> They're like, what? Yeah, uh, can't attack or block um, until my next turn. Okay, they're reading Mila now. Uh, it's it's so good to get people to read the new cards. I feel like I'm an advocate for the set, just being like, hey, I don't know if you know, but some new cards came out. You should read them. Wow. I love it. I love it. That's awesome. Oh, man, I can steal this and then turn it into something, but I think we just go for the Luka here. You know, uh, you know our, our pet here... It's got some dead weight, and it's sad, I know, but time to put her down. <laughs> Too dark, man. Too dark. <laughs> Hit. That'll take out the nightmare. Take five. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool, right? Pretty cool with these new cards doing the new card things. Myers Grasp, all right. It's a weaker lore hold. So minusing on this doesn't get us anything because it gets a thing of equal cost, so we should plus. Nice. Well, can't use it as a it's Let's play other Luca. There is a Bone Crusher down there. Come here, buddy. <laughs> ah, we got a rip apart. So we will destroy target enchantment. Which we could have done before with this rip apart, and that's lethal. <laughs> Sorry, sometimes I still forget about the disenchant. It's a good hand. We'll see what it turns out to do. How about my opponent? Do they want to play some creatures? Nope. They do not. Hey, Grimauling. 
Skyclave Cleric. Oh my gosh, somebody is playing creatures. Why did I not lead with the Triome? Am I really thinking I might cycle it? Something's wrong with me. I'm malfunctioning. Let's see what the opponent does here before we commit the Fire Prophecy. I want to make sure we hit something good. All right, so that is a four toughness. We're going to need to Skyclave it, so we may as well hit this. And well, let's decline. I like our hand. I'm a fan. And there's the card we would have needed to put away with the Fire Prophecy. Indulging Patrician. 1-4. I believe whenever they gain 3 life, I lose 3 life on the end step, and it has lifelink? Weird card. Let's see what happens if I attack. They take it. Okay. Should we kill it? I guess. <laughs> One less creature on the board. I want to go in for that lifelink deck. Gotta gain that life. Gotta tap carefully. What do you think they have for one white that they need to have available? Okay. Alright, let's lore hold them, guys. Hopefully we hit something good. Because we're giving them plenty of material. Lore hold command rip apart. Lorehold Command can kill the Luminarch Aspirant. Gain three life. Um, can make this indestructible. I don't think that's important. But I think it's the pick. And then, on the other hand, I think we want a 3-2. Nice. Hit them hard. We'll see if they've got spot removal left in this hand. Veto. And a land. Classic life gain. Alright. I guess I have to play ranked to find opponents that are interesting. Or opponents that will just play a full game of magic. So, that's a keep. It's a nice curve of removal. Definitely ready to go. Little bluff stop here. Let them think we have a shock. Oh, of course. Mono red. I don't think we kill this right away. I think we play this. So we don't have a tap land later. Another charger. Okay, I guess we'll have to app one of them. Want them to think we have something here. We don't want them to use the Rimrock Knight freely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, be afraid, be very afraid. Here comes the apparition. We're going to need to draw Luca to make the war good. I'm a little nervous. So, Frostbite. Yep. It's definitely time to start stop drawing lands and start drawing the good spells. There's the Annex. We can rip the Annex apart. We can also steal it. I think stealing it's great can always rip it apart after controlling it for a minute. Oh, we got a reader. We need to stop drawing land, though. I'm starting to get tilted. Uh-huh. We're reading again. Again, they probably have a Rimrock Knight. 
but it could have just been this frostbite holding priority before. Okay. So, what? What do they have? So we want to block and we want this to die. I don't know how to make it die though. I guess blocking Fervent Champion's not bad. We can definitely play a Skyclave. We could also play a Rip Apart here. But all these things are all these things are gonna die. Let's take out the charger. And let's save the rip apart in case the annex, we have to give it back. Okay. I'll take a token. Thank you. At least I have something if I draw Luca. Okay. Nice. I mean, you get this attack. And you get to rob me. No! Come on, it's like the best thing they could steal. <laughs> I bet I just draw land too. It's like the best thing they could steal. Two cards in one. Nice. Okay, 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 okay. This could get this could get funky. I don't think they block this, but if we hit a lore hold, we want to be able to use it. Come on. Fail. But if we have this app around next turn, we can turn it into a lore hold, so it's not that bad. Just please don't draw something amazing. Okay. Okay. This is a blue card. Okay. Let's go. Please draw something to deal with this Torbran. Lore hold. We have a lore hold command. We have a bone crusher giant. I mean, I think it's this. The life is really good. It's that or we can have a four three. I guess bone crusher giant might just be better than lore hold command because what we want to do is kill the Torbran. All right. Awkward. <laughs> I mean, I know I got the card for free. It still feels bad. But let's try to protect Luca here. Maybe Luca can draw some nice creatures. Some crafty companions, perhaps. This will get another free spell. Whoa. 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 You don't have anything that's gonna... You don't have a red cap melee in your main deck. I call. I call this bluff. <laughs> that's all it took. A call bluff. Top 500. Lorehold Elder Dragon. We go first. Our hand is good. Let's play magic. Number 333 versus 499. Opponent, Mobile Gamer. You can tell from the Thopter Pet. Doesn't mean they're on mobile right now, but they at least know how to log in with a mobile device. Bark Channel Pathway. Adventure Crap. Okay. So, si Revel in Silence probably isn't good. Do we... I think we hold up Bone Crusher here. The reason being, if they play an Innkeeper, we want to kill it. If they don't, we can kill the 1-1. But we still have to deal with the Lovestruck Beast, which... It's not good. It's not good for us. We only have a few cards that do it, and they're not in our hand. On the bright side, we can try to be aggressive. So our opponent has Brazen Borrower. They would have played it. Uh, it, it holds priority as soon as we have an online permanent. Mila. All right. Well, this makes Brazen Borrower worse. Let's get it down, and hopefully we can draw some cards because we're missing our land. 
We could have also offered a trade by attacking, but I don't really want that trade anyway. I don't want to spend my whole turn and have nothing on the battlefield to show for it. I'd rather play the Mila than trade a Bone Crusher and a Bone Crusher for the Lovestruck Beast. And we got a reader. Our opponent probably hasn't seen any new cards here in uh, Top 500 Mythic. Okay, we get to draw a card, and we get to disenchant that war, so... Oh man, our opponent gets to draw, though, don't they? I guess they do. At least we hit our land drop. Let's see. Whenever a permanent you control becomes target of a spell or ability... Ouch. Well, <laughs> there we go. All right, now that we have a meal on the board, let's attack and see if the opponent wants to make this trade. Nope. All right, let's play a Flame Scroll Celebrant, which says, whenever an opponent activates an ability that isn't a mana ability, they take one. I don't know if that's probably not going to happen. Almost no adventure cards have this. Oh, okay. And after all that, they were the Coma deck. Take one. I think that means I lose. And we can't hit the land to go get the lore hold, but even if we did, they would sacrifice, tap it. Um... It's not very fair, is it? No, it's not. Stump. Try to take this off the ability to... Yeah, we're just going to try to take it off the ability to go get something else. Upkeep. Revel in silence. You can't cast spells or activate loyalty abilities this turn. What could we draw? I guess a crow in war. Okay, if you sacrifice that, you take a damage. Opponent wants to get frisky. And no blocks. There's no point. And just prepare myself for a, for a terrible death. Fire Prophecy. Got our opponent to sacrifice a serpent. We we can't even hit land drop five. This has been a very unfair game. They do take a damage from sacrificing. Let's see if they're a complete coward. They're trying to figure out the play. It's to tap the giant, which draws us a card and does them a damage. Card. Guard? Take. Okay. Land? How could this happen? Alright, still nothing good going on here, so your turn. Alright, let's take that card. You're going to die. But at least I get to show you some things. Take another damage for cycling. Silence again. At least we get to see a lot of the ways that this weird Flame Scroll Celebrant card works, but it's not going to beat the Coma. S getting Coma is a little bit better than getting the Lore Hold. Anyway, 
Let's just go. And we are back for the post-game wrap. And this is definitely a play queue deck. The competitive side of things, there's just too many things that can go wrong. And while it's nice to beat the occasional mono red deck that shows up, most mono white decks, ultimatum decks, and adventure decks do have just better game than these cards put together. It's kind of sad that our five mana uh, four mode command usually just can't do anything against, say, a good adventure deck curve. And we really got exposed for not having a way to deal with a coma. Revel and Silence is a nice backdoor to try to fight ultimatum decks, but they still just have a ton of good cards. And in the end, they usually find a way to win no matter how you play it. So while I did enjoy the deck and I enjoy trying to build decks with the Elder Dragons and I'm not going to stop trying to do it, I would say that this is definitely a deck that is much more fun, much less competitive. And there's nothing wrong with that if you enjoy this style of gameplay. Uh, another quick note, make sure you check out MTG Nerd Girl's channel, follow her on Twitch and YouTube because we'll be putting up content there all week. Uh, this get to this kind of collab crossover travel adventure is brought to you by Cool Stuff Inc. We're going to be showing off the new cards, playing them in paper, and there's going to be a promo code for the event to save you money at CoolStuffInc.com, so make sure you check that out. Lots more info to come, and a good amount will probably be posted here on this channel too. So thank you for watching this video. As always, I'll see you in the next video. You're cool.